Motherboards can have atrociously ugly names and still be awesome. <laughs> That's what Gigabyte uh, um, wants to prove today. And glory to them for that. Um, the Gigabyte clearly realized how uniquely, unnaturally overspecced the B850 chipset was and made the B850 AI top, the first of its kind, to really show what a properly used B850 chipset can do, and, and, and also to prove once and for all that in 2025, we really don't need a more expensive X870 or X870 e-powered motherboard under any circumstances. Now, starting with the obvious, the board shows off the most solid eight-layered PCB money can buy, insulated by two ounces worth of additional copper plates, clearly going for the most robust interference-free foundation a long-lasting motherboard would need. Design-wise, we are in a professional minimalist theme. There is some elegance on the line here and there with some reflections stripes, but overall I don't find the B850 AI top to be particularly good looking, especially the AI top scribbling, which looks more like someone sneezed on the heat block and let it dry. And without any surprises, no RGB efforts anywhere to be found apart from a rather generous four RGB connectors to express all the stuff you have inside of you. Because yes, there is something inside of you. W worth expressing. CPU socket wise, we have our good for all wide spectrum AM5 CPU socket, which allows compatibility with a large menu of processors spanning from the CPUs released in 2021 and compatible with future release all the way down to 2027. So the B850 AI top is a stable, future-proofed computing solution. Now, chipset-wise, well, the B850 keeps on giving, allowing as many PCIe5 lanes as seen on its more expensive X870 and X870 E siblings. The only limitation here is the USB 4.0 restrictions, which, well, to be fair, is far from being a deal breaker with me, given the substantial uh, savings the B850 motherboards incur. Now, VRM wise well baby baby i don't think i've ever seen something like this ever we have 20 power stages 16 of which are 110 amps each the all configured in an 8 plus 1 plus 1 parallel phases configuration they are simply no superlative strong enough uh, uh, to describe this 1760 amps worth of cpu centric juice is more than you'll ever need until what, 2040, and I'm not certain I'm exaggerating that much. In other words, there are no processors here, now, and tomorrow on the market, which will consistently be a challenge to this power solution. Cooling-wise, well, Gigabyte didn't have much choice. It had to go heavy. We have two huge, massive pieces of aluminium linked by an 8mm wide copper pipe for a more homogeneous heat spray. Red. Our two segments feature the now industry standard double contact design to suck all our PSP and chokes hit away. So definitely the most premium advanced cooling block solution available to anyone well, today. Add to that the fact that your processor will probably won't use more than 60% at best of the 110 amps power phases and you get about the best thermal results you'll see on a motherboard. After an hour-long synthetic stress test on a massive R9 9900X, all blocks stayed nicely below the 50 degrees Celsius limit by a wide margin, which translates in a very stable, durable, and robust high-intensity computing. Obviously, one of the most powerful production-minded VRM you will see on the market today. Period. In all reason, this is a VRM which has been dreamed by an R9 class CPU and nothing less. So exponential kudos to Gigabyte for pulling this one off. What a strange combination of words. RAM-wise, well, the AI top supports up to 256 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM organized in a dual channel configuration with a maximum transfer rate going up to 8,600 million transfers per second, which is a tad more than you'll see on an equivalent Asus or MSI uh, motherboard. The point here is that you can have a bunch of RAM supported in one single stick, which is much more indicated if you want to, to get to, you know, higher 
transfer rates, say 7,500, 8,000 million transfer per second, which is great for gaming and video editing versus going uh, for a half slower, fully populated dual channel, much more indicated for memory intensive tasks such as 3D rendering, so we get the best of both worlds. Storage-wise, well, that's where the B850A at top had to show some restraint. We have only three M.2 solid state drive connectors, two of which are PCIe 5.0 enabled for a much faster up to 128 gigabit per second per stick against only 32 gigabit per second on the chipset fed PCIe 4 enabled third stick. Cooling wise Gigabyte decided to go for some very premium screwless hit plates for all of the M.2 connectors which again is a first on a B850 motherboard. Other brands will give you a, a, a screwless mechanism, a detachable mechanism on one M.2 connector. I've never seen them on all of them so that's already a good point for Gigabyte here. In addition all of the thermal plates are nice and fat and are all equipped with thermal pads except our closest M.2 connector to the CPU which as usual receives the bulk of the cooling focused with a double thermal padding treatment and a massive cooling block instead of a more common plate. Now that is really plenty for you know a good gaming uh, or a good production setup and in that last scenario if you feel a little bit tight we have an additional four uh, uh, SATA 3. So why would I start this section by saying only three connectors. Well, if you look at the competition, you'll see that they all come with either four or even five M.2 connectors. So why did Gigabyte decide to equip their most expensive B850 motherboard with only three M.2 connectors? Because this is also the only B850 motherboard in existence who can support a dual GPU configuration, which brings us to the exports. Our first two PCIe exports are CPU fed and therefore can deliver PCIe 5.0 lanes. In a single GPU configuration, our first PCIe export is the only one able to deliver up to 16 PCIe 5.0 lanes or a symmetric 64 gigabytes per second worth of bandwidth. Since this is a configuration which will be used by 90% of us, this is where you will also find the unique GPU export mechanism, which has now become an industry standard. In a dual GPU export configuration, both exports split and share the CPU lanes available to them in an 8x8 PCIe 5.0 lanes configuration, which is still more than enough to run any uh, uh, 50, 90 times 2 out there without any bottleneck fear, hence the metallic reinforcement seen on both of these exports. The last export can go up to only 32 gigabit per second on the chipset fed to lane at PCIe 4.0 standard, which is, well, six times faster than say a SATA 3 standard and can be a great storage expansion slot option. And if you thought that was impressive, Note that in a single or dual GPU configuration, both of our PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drives are not losing any bandwidth, which is a first in uh, any kind of motherboard I have reviewed so far. Now, the only PCIe bifurcation, bifurcation I have seen is a minor one here. These two PCIe 4.0 components share bandwidth. So if you populate this M.2 solid state drive connector, well, its neighboring uh, PCIe expansion goes dead, but not a, a big deal if you ask me. I, in the opposite, I think that what uh, a Gigabyte is showing here, it's absolute impeccable bandwidth control. Uh, so yeah, big bandwidth, kudos to Gigabyte for this. Now, back IO wise, what a strange crowd. Obviously, we do not have any more available lanes to feed any USB 4.0 plugs. Instead, we have a mash of legacy and kind of current plugs for a rather modest result. Fortunately, we do have some front panel connectors reinforcement, but yeah, nothing grandiose. Uh, where the back IO excels though is in its connectivity abilities. We got the latest low latency, fiber graded Wi-Fi 7 uh, dual band adapter, the Bluetooth 5.4, but most extraordinarily, we have not one, but two 10 gigabit LAN adapters. Now, I don't know if you know how difficult and hard it is to find a motherboard with a single 10 gigabit LAN. So having two on a B850 powered motherboard, it's refreshing. And, and some of you will say, well, why would I need that much? I have fiber optic at home going at eight gigabit per second. I've been struggling to find a motherboard which will handle a 10 gigabit LAN. 
here it is without an external adapter. Well, here I have one. And secondly, um, you know, when you're doing a lot of video editing or, or 3D rendering, you, you usually have a NAS and you do the editing directly on the NAS. And having 10 gigabit per second or dual 10 gigabit per second adapter allows you to feed this computer as fast as you can and not having you know, kind of lagging and latency issues when you're doing rendering and video editing. So absolutely a central tool for production-minded motherboards. In terms of integrated graphics, note that in addition to our HDMI output, the Type-C doubles up as a display port as well. Always a plus. Finally, audio-wise, we got a rather good, not great, but good ALC 1220 codec from Realtek, cleansed by a generous 500 microfarads worth of capacitors. Again, enough for, you know, for this kind of motherboard. It's, it's going to be great for, you know, playing good quality audio and having a static-free recording. So on that, basics are done. Overall, we have um, a very divided back I.O. I feel. On one side, well, it's a USB starved kind of back I.O. Again, enough for your day to day, but we don't have a 20 or 40 gigabit per second uh, type C uh, output. We don't have fast charging. Instead, everything has been focused on production with a dual 10 gigabit LAN adapter, which again is mind blowing to see on the BH50 motherboard and really had to say, make this board a very complete production minded product. Cooling wise, well, the, the board features the usual 8PWM fan connectors, two of which can support water pumps, making the BH50 AI top a surprisingly well featured board for custom water cooling solutions, custom water cooling build in a single or dual loop. Especially interesting if you're going on a dual GPU configuration, because I don't know if you've seen, but 5090s are freakingly big. So yeah, a water cooling, custom water cooling will make them fit in your build much more easily and will make them much lighter as well. Now, troubleshooting wise, well, knowing how much, you know, power bandwidth this thing packs uh, a gigabyte took the time to properly equip the AI top with everything you'll need to operate it and keep it operating. We have our easy debugger, a much more precise error code uh, OLED screen, absolutely love that, and all the soldered buttons needed for a quick power down, reset, or uh, uh, clear CMOS. There is very little more in terms of troubleshooting a board can feature, and you can see gigabytes absolute focus, making sure that you could navigate every inch of performance this motherboard can bring and do so safely. Big, big troubleshooting. Kudos to Gigabyte for this. Now, in conclusion, the Gigabyte B850AI top will cost you only around $350 before taxes. It is an absolute steal. I do not need to compare it to anything before and since to appreciate the fact that there is nothing at that price range which will remotely propose the specifications and the quality build we have here. And what it was designed for is pure, indisputed 3D rendering, video editing, production kind of activities. The VRM is opulent, the PCI 5.0 compliant dual GPU unprecedented, at least on the B850 class motherboard, and the dual 10 gigabit LAN, again, just outstanding. And the next motherboard who can hope to have that kind of production graded features all cost way beyond a grand, a thousand dollars. And please uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. In short, I think you get the point. Uh, I absolutely love uh, the motherboard. I love the fact that we can do that much at that price point. And if you are looking for a solid, uh, performant production motherboard by Zeus and his homos, there is nowhere else your money needs, wants, and begs to be.